Hey Terror fans, we made it to episode 5 of Terror 29 TV. We're so excited, it's crazy, we've already made it through 5 episodes. I wonder what I'm gonna look like on episode 100. Hmm. Okay, well, let's get into this episode. In this episode, it's all about theming your haunted attraction, your haunted house, or your home haunt, scenic design, detailing, all that super fun stuff. We're gonna go over brick paneling and how to detail that. We're gonna talk about our boiler room that we made, and we're gonna show you this really cool, it's a glue gun that you plug into an air compressor to make really realistic cobwebs. So let's get right into episode five. Hey Terror fans, Frank here. We're gonna show you some cool stuff. We're gonna show you how we take this fake looking brick and we're gonna make it look more real bricky brick like. <laughs> now I'm gonna do the normal voice so I can explain this to you better and you can understand me a little better. So, some haunts like to use foam for their brick and we've done that too, but what we're gonna do is gonna save a lot of time. What we need to do is make some cement and we're gonna go do that right now. All right, so this is the cement we're using, type one Portland cement, whatever. You can get it at your local hardware store. Um, I'm just gonna pour a few cups in here and get some water, and then we're gonna mix it up. We're gonna go put some cement on some bricks. Sweet. Let's do it, Frank. Let's do it. So for this next part, the gloves are coming off. So I can put more gloves on. To make the process a little smoother, a little easier, I put the cement in a Ziploc baggie. I'm gonna cut the corner here. And it's gonna be like a little, a little makeshift piping bag, kind of. And fun fact, this was actually Elephant Man's idea. Yeah, his, his idea. Thank you, Elephant us, Man. To uh, smooth this process out. So we're gonna add some more cement on here. There's no right or wrong. Alright, so while I'm doing this, we're going to show you what the finished product looks like in our alleyway. So there you got to see what it looks like in our haunt, the finished product of the cement wall. Um, this is obviously going to take me a while, I'm not going to bore you with that. So I'm going to hand it off to Cass and she's going to show you what she did in the boiler room. Hey Terror fans, Cass here. Uh, today I'm going to, I already said, I forgot what I was gonna say. Today I'm going to give you a tour and show you all the work that I did to bring our boiler room to light. So, actually when I jumped on to the detailing part, uh, your mom I think had worked on it, a bunch of you had already built the boards, there's like, do they, there's, you see that, how flimsy they are? They're just like these big purple foam boards that um, we first painted really a dark gray. Uh, then we moved on to, you see, the, the silvering, the star helped. There was, there was a lot of hands in this. What we're showcasing today is some of the detail. Detail is super important when you're doing your own haunts, anything. You want to distinguish yourself. You want it to also look authentic. And part of our boiler room is that rusted look. To do that, we had different browns, different oranges that we mixed together. There was parts where I painted it on with a brush. There was parts I splattered it on. I remember this part, I, would, I think I just took the brush and went psh, 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 and let it drip down. So you just have just this nasty, weird, wet look. Mistakes, they're gonna happen. Sometimes you are doing a process that you would you would think was okay. One thing I wanted to do with some of our detail was give it a sheen. I wanted it to look wet. Um, I tried to put like an, uh, an overcoat spray on it. It didn't work, but what happened is this spray ended up melting through all the layers of paint that I had put on, and we ended up with this almost, this melted metal, gross look that we actually I think it works and uh, this is one of the things I did uh, we we have sawdust paint here so you get really good texture and it still dries and like you see here it doesn't it doesn't come off these are some of the grates that we had bought brand new shiny metal and uh, we used rust dust Ooh, now, rust oh, dust! Rust dust! Right there, it's like magic. Yeah, it's 
the torture factory rust dust that we used. Uh, we took, like I said, you can take brand new metal and uh, you put it on there. There's an activate spray, activation spray. And then you can, you get this really cool detail that looks rusty and gross in the dark. And you can't tell that it's just a fabricated aging. If it's aged and gross looking, you would want more detail. After I had done all the different types of detailing, which, which we did put more of a rust paint look on top of our metal look. And then we also do a dripping to indicate like just condensation and all sorts of like just grossness. People see this, they automatically think dirty, nasty. That's not how I keep my home. Well, that's how we keep Terra 29 and it's awesome. With these flimsy boards, guess what's gonna happen at your haunt? Exactly. <laughs> we could not have timed that out perfect. Better. Yeah, That's you're so you're great. gonna have damages. You're gonna have Just repairs. Like right here. Yeah, you're gonna need to make repairs. That's actually a super easy little one that we have. But we actually have a story for you. Story time. Repairs. They happen. Uh, they happen especially when a whole family falls through your wall. And that's what we had happen over here. These used to be perfect, beautiful walls. So I had to mix up one of my things that I mentioned earlier is paint and sawdust. If you take sawdust, mix it with paint, and you can use it as like a paste. If you see this, you can't really scratch it away. With the paint, it dries so beautifully and it gives it a really good textured look. Um, this one, this was all broken here all broken here and it was it was all it looked perfect like this and then suddenly it's like that i made my paste did that painted more black gave it a smeary look drippy there's blood in there too so and i you know i wanted to highlight these parts because as in theater you want to exaggerate things you want to make sure things are noticeable so that's just a little bit of what we did for our boiler room. But for now, we're gonna let Zach take it away and show you how we're gonna have some glue gun fun making some spider webs. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Should we use this take? I don't know. That'd be funny, right? All right, you guys, we're gonna go over the Webmaster hot glue gun. You plug this into an air compressor and it gives you realistic looking cobwebs. One thing to know, if you do ever mess with these, is to always use the glue sticks that they provide and sell for the gun. Is if you put regular glue sticks in there, it can gunk this all up and it doesn't work, so don't try it. I know these are a little bit more expensive than normal ones, but definitely use those. So I'm gonna plug this in, we're gonna let it warm up, plug it into the air compressor. I'm gonna turn on the air compressor, it's gonna be super loud, and we're just gonna do a time lapse so you guys can see what this looks like. So that's it for the Webmaster hot gun. This is gonna take me quite a while to do this entire room, so we just wanted to demo what this does, how cool the cobwebs look. I'm gonna pop up some pictures as well, because it might be difficult to see on the video, but in the photos you can really get an idea of how realistic this cobwebbing looks. And so that's what we wanted to do for this video, for this episode, just some tips and tricks to theme your haunt, to make it look cooler, spookier, more scenic, more realistic. And that's it. That's it for this episode. We'll see you guys next week for episode six.